Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of TCE Talks. Uh, my name is Rich and today I'm going to be chatting with you about how various parts of the TCE system fit together. So in previous episodes I have um, approached the topic of how um, there isn't really um, a method as such or there isn't um, a systematic approach as such to, to learning the TCE. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now, um, that isn't to say that there isn't a way that you can structure your practice using a set of tools in order to develop as a player. Otherwise, it would be an inapplicable system. Um, something that Jose Johnson said to me when I talked on the um, uh, on the Brass Guru's hang <laughs> for a second I couldn't remember what it was called when I talked on the Brass Gurus podcast was how um, it's all well and good having you know having something you can do um, and demonstrate to others and use in your own playing but unless you can teach it to others um, there's really not a lot of purpose in talking about it you know um, it, it, a system gains legitimacy when you can teach it to somebody else so I thought that I would break down um, the tools and just sort of give my thoughts on how these tools interact with each other um, and how they fit together in order to create a system that we can practice to improve our playing. Now, um, you, I think I've said in a previous episode as well that the way I see things um, um, with this stuff is that we are what we are doing is embouchure development we are doing embouchure development using the tce system um as opposed to saying i am not um i mean you can say i use a tce i use a tongue controlled embouchure but i don't like to to think of it in those terms because i think that there was a lot of talk in in the olden days um, especially online with people who you know maybe taken a couple lessons or just seen some videos or read a book that Jerry had put out or something like that, and they were almost given the impression that you could design a perfect embouchure. Uh, Jerry was really f uh, famous for doing these hand drawn cross sections of the face where he would um, highlight you know the ideal tongue position. Um, um, in fact, I've got a, a whole bunch of handwritten um, examples that I, I should have retrieved from the other room in order to, to show you. I'll do that in another episode. The funny thing is I have actually got a stack of books here that I was going to wave in front of the camera at one point. Um, but I didn't think I was going to talk about that. So anyway, um, the idea, the thing is with looking at these pictures is, is it gave it gave people the impression that you could just, as long as you've got, this tongue position right, all of a sudden everything would magically fall together. And I don't think that that's how Jerry thought at all. He was constantly rebuilding his chops from the bottom up every time he had a new approach. Um, and in the lessons that I had with him, he, you know, he, he didn't care about me applying what he was teaching to playing in the stratosphere or to playing any particular type of music, in fact. But um, what he wanted was for me to be able to you know, execute a clean, a, a clean attack, playing scales in tune, find, you know, getting the sensation, learning how it feels, learning um, how to set the chops before placing the mouthpiece and that sort of business so that then I could go away and practice and um, turn those things into habits. So anyway, here's, um, here's a few things. I'm going to start at the beginning with Einsetzen and Zetzen. Um, this is probably uh, well worthy of multiple videos just in itself because one of the uh, something I've always found fascinating about um, Einsetzen and Einsetzen double pedal note exercises is that th there are as many different ideas of how they work and what they're doing as there are people using them. Um, um, I thought I would start this section by reading a, a piece um, from a piece of paper that was given to me by Bob Civiletti um, when I met him some years ago. In fact, I should have thought about checking this before. 
this is not this is not the piece of paper I wanted. Well, that's a shame. Um, oh, I almost want to stop the video and then go retrieve more materials. Yes, I'll go do that. Okay, let's see if I can start this again in a moment. And I'm back. Okay, so it turns out that um, I cannot find the piece of writing that I wanted to read to you, which is uh, very a little bit strange, actually. I'm, I'm quite used to knowing where where to find everything. But anyway, um, in this in this text, Bob Civiletti talked about um, about Einsatz and Ansatz and being the origin of the TCE. And um, and basically, I think he goes on to insinuate that at that time, um, you know, not even Jerry Callett really knew how how this system worked. Jerry used to talk a lot about relaxation, whether it be um, specifically relaxing the, the corners of the mouse when you play. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, odd comments in, in various editions of, say, Trumpet Yoga and the Brass Power and Endurance book where um, he talks about this U-shaped mouth um, pulling, pulling everything pulling vertically upwards from the corners of the mouth like this, um, which results in the, the lower lip going up over the going up over the top teeth. Um, an idea that sort of becomes the, the basis of um, the basis of the Super Chomps book, really. And you know, so during those periods. Um, Jerry was sort of like trying to hone in on exactly what it was that was, you know, that worked about his his system of playing. And I think that, you know, in many ways, that's what sort of led him to let go of of um, at least publicizing the Einsetzen and Ansetzen as a practice. He certainly carried on teaching it to people um, continuously at even even to the point that it's included on the dvd that he brought out in 2007 um the mastering super chops dvd that i mentioned before so um yeah so there's that the the general idea from from jerry was that it was it was about relaxing the face um an idea that has helped me a lot you know sort of in terms of um I mean, there's so much to unpack here. In in the the trumpet yoga book, there's actually talk about you using isometric exercises whereby you um, unroll the chops and then hold hold them in in this position until until you get the burning sensation. Um, that's not relaxed at all. You know, there's there's plenty of muscular effort going on there. It's very different from anything you'd normally do when when playing the trumpet. And so, you know, maybe that's a big part of it. When you look at um, uh, Barb Civiletti's talk about about what the um, about what the the Einsetzen Einsetzen is doing, he talks about the orbicularis oris muscle. That's this circular muscle that surrounds the lips that you can see when you do the um, the tongue position, and you see it in you know you see it flexing with a lot of of high quality players. I'm not going to suggest that that's because they're doing um, anything that relates to TCE, but what it does say is that they are using the same muscles that we develop through the TCE system. That's the important message to get across, is that it's it's using the correct muscles as opposed to stretching the lips as to use to tight, tightening the corners and using pressure, all this, all this business. Um, I think a lot of people who talk about um, tightening the corners may not actually be doing it um or or not at least in at least as much not as much as they believe so but you know that's that's for other people to analyze and i'm not going to make make claims that i can't back up um and then i just also wanted to sort of mention the uh balanced embouchure description which talks about the this stuff in terms of range of motion you're literally just learning to put the lips into a different place um as in they roll, you know, roll out to play lower, and they they will roll in as you play higher. So there, it's we're not really talking about muscular tension at all, or or building up strength or anything like that. 
it's just teaching the muscles or, or teaching the, the face to move into positions that it couldn't move into before. And I think that that's a very valuable idea. So for me, what I, uh, what I tell people when they ask me what um, you know, what on earth are these exercises for? I would say that in my experience, if I practice um, the basic series of Einsatz and Ansatz and exercises, um, which are developed and, uh, you know, there are a lot more sort of intermediary steps and more interesting things to do in my book, Exploring the Double Pedal Register, available from neoterecbrass.com. Um, <laughs> distracted myself then with a little advert in the middle. Um, if I was to practice these these Einsatz and Ansatz and exercises for 15 minutes to half an hour every day for a week, then take the weekend off. So I've just done it five days in a row and then pick up my trumpet on Monday. My ability to put the tongue into exactly the right position for the TCE is is improved tremendously. I, it's well, it's like the, doing the Einsatz and Ansatz and exercises has as as demonstrated to to me how like where everything should be when it's functioning at its optimum level. Um, and so what I'm not saying here is that it's enabled me to develop the strength to play higher. Um, it may well also have done that. It may I may have been exercising the abicularis oris, but I also recognize that I'm probably putting my jaw in a slightly different position. Or maybe it's just that my jaw is more open and that enables the forward tongue to, to lock into place better. I, I'm not even going to bother speculating, but I think that, that these Einsatz and Ansatz and exercises will give anybody an instinctive knowledge of correct embouchure function and embouchure movements um, as a result of practicing them over a long period of time. I've also found that doing these exercises has taught me a lot about breathing and not wasting air because you can get a really loud sound on those double pedal tones without hardly blowing at all, um, just like in the, the normal playing register. And um, again, if you were to take, say, a long note exercise like the one in my book and play it at 60 beats a, a minute, um, <clears throat> it's a challenge to, to play seven bars in a breath but it can be done when you use your air correctly when and that's to do with compressing the air and not blowing out of the body um what else before i move on from mindsets and ansets and uh, nothing let's leave it at that because i don't want to ramble so time check uh, yeah doing all right for time so the next thing i will uh sort of brief briefly kind of touch on um, I, gosh, this is going to end up being a really long, long video and maybe two videos. I'd always do this. <laughs> I talk a lot. Okay. So, um, the next thing would be the spit buzz. Now, um, I sometimes tell people that spit buzzing is like an isometric exercise. Um, I think that its primary purpose is to teach people, um, the physical sensation of correct note production when using spitting as the primary form of note production. So, um, yeah, that, that's really it. Now there, there is text, there's things that, that Jerry has, has said or written about, um, how you should be able to develop the ability to spit buzz over the range of two octaves. I respectfully disagree um, I think that in pursuit of that, I did spit buzzing wrong for quite a long time. And we're talking about years. I mean, I don't, I, I have not done a lot of spit buzzing in recent years, but, um, yeah, it, it was, a, it turned into a thing where you end up using tension in the face, trying to mash the lips together so you can spit buzz a higher pitch. That's not what it's about. If now, nowadays, if I was to alternate between spit buzzing and playing whilst learning a, a passage of a study or something, which is something I do quite a lot in my practice. Um, let me circle back to that contradiction in a minute. Um, then 
I will not use pitch or I, I wouldn't I will use I would have say like a low pitch and a high pitch that I move between but they will not relate directly to the pitches that are played on the trumpet um, for the simple reason that anything you do with a loose lip buzz um, when you integrate that into the system that includes a mouthpiece and and an instrument then the pitch of that buzz changes as a result um, you know it's the way it's all to do with the way that the air pressure react you know interacts with the the standing wave in the instrument and that's got nothing to do with how hard you can mash the lips together or how much tension you can get so in simple terms a, a basic spit buzz would look something like this <laughs> For me, it's low pitched. It is it is relaxed, and I'm just literally spitting small packets of air. But even even something like that, once you integrate it with the instrument, is very powerful. And that brings me on to something I've talked about with with pupils in the past as well. Is that the spit but the spit buzz is incredibly powerful, and you can demonstrate to yourself simply that just going into the trumpet is about as loud as you'll ever have to play. And granted, that was that note would have been about the length of a semiquaver or a sixteenth note, but it is um, it was as loud as you'd ever have to play. And knowing that, demonstrating that to yourself by putting the spit buzz into the trumpet, let me um, upset the sound man a minute, like this, in that same way. Yeah, you know, if you can learn to control that, then you're never going to have a, a problem with with power. Yeah, you know, that is you don't. I'm not. I didn't use any air. I didn't take a deep breath. I didn't blow hard. But I could produce. That was a C in the staff. I could do it an octave higher, an octave lower. I could do it on any note, just by sitting here and going because I know how those notes feel. I know how to to use the spit buzz to make those notes happen. So. You know, in, in many ways, that's that's all that the spit buzz is. Is it's it's yes, it's an isometric exercise to help up build build up strength in the tongue. Um, you can you there are plenty of ways that you can turn this stuff into a, a isometric exercises that I wouldn't always recommend to people because I th I know of players who just do everything to excess. So if I was to say to you, oh, why don't you practice pushing your tongue into the bottom lip and looking at how the muscles um, flex? And then they'll go and do it for an hour a day and wonder why they still why they can't play the trumpet. And, you know, there's a <laughs> so you know, that's why I don't recommend stuff like that to people, because they won't be sensible. Um, well, this, you know, this, that's, that's our purpose of the spit buzz is to get the correct sensation of pressurizing the air in your mouth and then releasing it without moving the tongue out the way. It's that sort of action. The tongue is static. It's, it's in position doing a job. So, um, Bob Civiletti's system using the five articulations takes us away from the spit buzz because it, um, uh, because he, he refers to it as the spit attack. He believes that that the spit buzz takes people in the wrong direction. And I think that that relates very much to the things that I've just said in terms of, you know, people try to use the muscles of the face to hold everything s static. And then, um, and the spit buzz is too brittle. It is, it's got no tone. It's, it's not relaxed. Um, and then everything just becomes effort. And that's not what this is about. We don't want to be using physical effort to play. Um, and so, yeah, the spit buzz is easy to do wrong. And I think that it's, you know, for, for many people, it's probably best um, to circumvent it. Here's the thing that we know is that when we play, it's more like <laughs> probably with much less air than I just demonstrated, but it's not we're not buzzing into the instrument. Um, the lips buzz, you know, in, in sympathy with the air column. Um, and so when it comes to playing, the mouthpiece holds them in position. And, um, and, and yeah, you're playing with the instrument. You're not, you're not spit buzzing into the instrument. Um, I will go into that in more detail. I want to actually do a, a video about, um, 
about Jerome Callett's philosophy on mouthpiece design because I've un, you know I've dug up a lot of information over the years and I don't think that anyone out there is communicating it effectively to the public. Um, so I will, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll do that, and I, I think it will. I'll be, I'll be able to include further further insight into the spit buzz in that video. Um, it's one that for me is going to take a bit of time to do some research and um, to do some research and to put some resources together so I can do it as a, a visual with visual aids and screenshots of old websites and brochures and that sort of thing. Um, I think that would be you know helpful for people to have access to that knowledge so that um, they can educate themselves about whether it, it's possible to play the trumpet with more than one mouthpiece. Um, you all know what that means. So, um, right, I, I'm conscious of the time thing, as always. Yes, we're, we're well well up on, on time, so I'm going to cut this one off here. Um, uh, obviously, we'll, we'll have a part two because I've got plenty more to, to jabber on about on this topic. But you've bas basically, I've talked a little bit about you know, why do we, why we do Einsatz and Ansatz and how it works for me as part of my practice. You know, it is basically the, um, uh, the foundation of my, of my practice, if you like, but its purpose is to, to develop the habit of, of holding the, the lips, tongue and jaw in the right position to, um, to be able to use the TCE, um, tongue technique um, without me having to consciously manipulate stuff and try to, for example, push my jaw forward, which I, I wouldn't, you know, it's not an instruction I give people. Um, all that stuff. That's what the Einsetzen and Einsetzen is about. And I've talked a little bit about the spit buzzing. And I think I could talk more about the spit buzzing, but I'll, I'll do that at another time. So there we go. Um, I'll, I, this looks like it's going to be another two part of that where I bring out part two later this week. Um, I do have another video topic lined up with with it's all planned out. So um, yes, hopefully that will keep us busy for a while. Anyway, thank you for watching and um, catch up with me in part two.